Policy is the engine room of transformation of any sector of the nation's economy. A single agricultural policy is capable of transforming the Nigeria agricultural sector. The Nigeria government over the years has initiated a lot of policies that are changing the face of the agricultural sector in the country. On this episode of the program, we will examine some policies of government in the agricultural sector in recent times and efforts made by the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development and other stakeholders in implementing those policies. I'm your regular guide, Ibrahim Yusuf, welcoming you on board to the program Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. Keep watching. Before we take on the issue of policies in the agricultural sector, let us take the news from the Ministry, highlights of which include El Rufai Commission's tomato processing plant in Kaduna, even as a Bonyu state government urges farmers to take agriculture as a business. Kaduna state governor Malin Nasr Ahmed El Rufai recently commissioned a tomato processing plant with a promise to make the state an industrial hub in the country. Speaking at the commissioning ceremony, Governor El Rufai described the 10 billion Naira plant as evidence that investors have responded to the government's consistent pitch about the economic potentials in Kaduna. The governor added that when they performed the groundbreaking of the project in January 2020, they welcomed it as a vital investment in the agricultural potentials of Kaduna State. El Rufai commended Tomato Joss for its investment in the state and wished its success as it grows tomato farming to also processing tomatoes. Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefile, was represented at the event by the bank's head of retail agriculture credit, Chika Mwaja. Emefile commended the Kaduna State Government for attracting more investors into the state, saying the success story of the processing plant has proven the priority that President Muhammad Ubari's administration has placed on diversifying the nation's economy. Farmers in Ibonyi State have been charged by the state government to take agriculture as a serious business to meet international standards in food production. The State Commissioner for Agriculture and Natural Resources, Moses Nome, gave the charge during the inauguration of a three-day workshop organized by Africa Rice on Zero Hunger Project in collaboration with IPAD VCDP for rice farmers and extension agents in Abakaliki. Nome stated that Ebony State is now the highest rice producer in Nigeria with 4 million metric tons based on the data sent to the state from the Federal Ministry of Trade and Investment. He said that knowledge of good agronomic practices is the most important foundation to productivity. He advised the farmers to pay attention to understanding the quality of what to produce to meet international standards. When we talk about agriculture, our minds quickly focuses on some very basic things, which include the land, the inputs, farming system, and the favorable weather. In our next segment, Records of the FDA, we will examine some policies of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development as it affects farm input, mechanization, irrigation, and agri-extension to ensure food security in the country, regardless of climate change. Keep watching. Agriculture is an integral part of human existence because man cannot live without food and agriculture produces food. However, the reality of climate change has affected food production. What we've been seeing in the last couple of years, right from 2012, I should say, due to climate change in Nigeria has been experiencing quite a number of um, disasters, I should say, in terms of natural disasters such as flooding in the northern part of the country as well as dry spells in the in the southern part of the country. Then we've also had the incidences of pests and diseases which come about as a result of climate change, like the fall army worm, which we're experiencing on maize, the tomato Ebola, which you also had uh, affected the productivity of tomato in the country and escalated the prices of those food crops. One approach that the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is handling the effect of climate change is to ensure that climate predictions are made known to farmers. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture on its own um, uh, is developing an MOU with, with NIMED to downscale 
this uh, um, annual seasonal uh, climate prediction so that it will be in a usable form for the farmers to use. For example, a farmer, let's say uh, in Ogun State, should know where to plant his maize, his, maize, his rice. A farmer in Jigawa should know where to plant rice, maize. So you can even downscale it up to local government level. Aside weather predictions, another approach taken to ensure food security despite the climate change is government's policy directive for research institutes to develop crop varieties that can withstand the effect of climate change such as drought and flood resistant varieties. Just recently because of the floods that, was, that, that has been happening in Nigeria, they have now um, developed a tool flood resistant varieties for 66 and 67 and the feedback we got for for farmers that actually planted um, those varieties when the flood happened especially around Kibi and other states um, and Niger and I think Wogi the flood resistant varieties other varieties were of course destroyed completely but the flood resistant varieties which can be submerged for about three weeks under water still picked up and they, they harvested from it. This we got from the farmers. The fertility of soil plays a significant role in determining the productivity of crops. Soil, however, is subject to diminishing returns after seasons of continuous cropping. This is where fertilizer used by farmers to boost soil fertility comes in. The demand for fertilizer had always been on the high side and Nigeria used to depend on importation of fertilizer. Morocco and Nigeria signed an ambitious collaboration agreement to revive the abundant Nigeria fertilizer blending plants. The Nigeria-Morocco bilateral arrangement on fertilizer has changed the narrative in recent times by increasing local production of fertilizer. The relationship we have with the Moroccan government is to provide a subsidized input for the production of fertilizer. It is the kind of an arrangement that they will supply Nigeria or Nigeria will buy from them at subsidized rate. And so the government is now making the raw materials available for the blenders at a subsidized rate. So, so that at the end of the day, the cost at which the, the farmers will be buying the fertilizer is going to be subsidized by the government. In ensuring that farmers have direct access to farm input than ever before, the government has also developed agriculture for food and job plan to get accurate data of farmers. As of today, we have registered farmers up to slightly above 6 million. But our target is to, leave, to reach 10 million. These are data that we will get of each farmer. We will get your picture, your BVN, your bank account, the size of your farm. You will be geomapped with your farm. If we take you as Mr. A and press A, your name will come with the size of your farm on all your particulars. So we go with Mr. B, the same thing. The purpose of that is we want to remove these middlemen from getting support, a farmer from getting support from the government. So if what you want from the government is fertilizer per se, by the time we press A and get the size of your farm, we will calculate the number of bags you need for that farm. So government would deploy that back for you and you will pay back in cash or kind. Another agricultural policy of government that has taken a center stage is mechanization. Mechanization will certainly change the fortune of agriculture in Nigeria for good. But mechanization is not possible without the fabrication of equipment and maintenance. Amortrack is an acronym of Agricultural Machinery Operators and Training Center. We have two in the country, one in Misau, Bauchi State, 
and one in Akure Ondo State. This is to take care of training agricultural machinery operators and mechanics because it has been observed most of our agricultural equipment could not stay their shelf life because of lack of maintenance. So we have to have the requisite skill to be able to maintain our machinery so that they can at least work for us up to their lifespan. Then again, we have the Rural Blacksmiths Training Center, which is in Ilorin. And that one also is to try and teach our blacksmiths how to fabricate simple tools that could be required from time to time by these agricultural equipment. We don't need to import them and we don't need to wait for too long to get it. The benefits inherent in mechanization cannot be overemphasized. It will indeed increase our production capacity and ensure food security in the country. Take for example, you have, I still go back to one hectare farm. Take, it will take maybe 10, 20 people to cultivate that farm in two, three days. By the time you apply a mechanization, one hectare you can, you can at least cultivate one hectare in less than 20 minutes with a tractor. What have you achieved? You have achieved, you have removed drudgery from physical application of uh, manpower. And then you have increased productivity. If you can cultivate one hectare in 20 minutes, which means you can do 10 times, 20 times of that uh, without having any drudgery associated with it. Another area the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development is encouraging productivity is irrigation farming. Irrigation holds more productivity than rain-fed farming season. Irrigation is a very well-conceived uh, mechanization angle that we have to irrigate if we want to get maximum yield of our crops. It has been well established for a particular hectare cultivated during wet season. If you get 10 tons of whatever crop you produce, if you do that same operation during dry season, you will get 20 tons. Every agricultural policy and innovation can only see the light of the day if extension services are provided to farmers. The ministry is also tirelessly working in making policy to ensure a uniform teaching model for extension services as well as boosting the number of extension agents. Now, uh, both public and private, if you go for training of extension workers, you find out that uh, Mr. A is using a different model in training a farmer on a particular value chain, while Mr. B is having his own different model and approach on how to train a farmer on a new way of agricultural practice, that is good agricultural practices. So by the time you have this policy, it will guide in holistic operation of extension services and uh, in pluralistic way, whereby all things will be guided and uh, coordinated by that policy. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture makes policies in the agricultural sector. However, it does not stand alone to implement such policies. Nigeria's agricultural sector can only attain its full potentials when the private sector is fully involved in contributing to the development of the sector. But how is the ministry partnering with the private sector in policy formulation and implementation for food sufficiency in Nigeria? Let us find out in our next segment, Partnership for Development. We will try to avoid any chemical form of fertilizer or anything. I hope you are following the normal procedure of feeding. 
will be fascinated seeing uh, things moving. In order to make fertilizer more available to farmers, the federal government has created an enabling environment for private sector to thrive in the production of fertilizer as well as distribution. Partnership with the private sector has accelerated fertilizer blending plants from previous 10 blending plants to over 50 blending plants in the hands of private sector across the country. Government is trying to make sure that fertilizer is everywhere as we speak Today, we have over 53 uh, blending plants in the country. And these blending plants are supposed to be, you know, to serve the farmers. And so the, the, for the farmers to be able to assess the fertilizer, they don't need to really come to government. It is there on the field. It's there in the market. And so the, fertilizer, the farmers can easily assess. Nigeria is richly blessed with over 97 million hectares of arable land, but only 39 million hectares are in use. For more utilization of the nation's arable land, there is urgent need for more tractors for full-fledged mechanization of our arable land and food sufficiency. In the light of this, the federal government is partnering with the government of Brazil. The federal government of Nigeria thought it wise to see how can we get this mechanization equipment so that we can mechanize our agriculture. Fortunately, the Federative Republic of Brazil had a program they are running, More Food International Program, which was the coming of this administration. We were lucky to key into it, and it was approved by Mr. President that we should seek to join that program and it was approved by the Brazil government. Under that program, there is a robust plan to increase the number of tractors, not only tractors, but other harvest and post-harvest equipment into the Nigerian agriculture. This collaboration is not only government to government partnership, but the private sector will be involved. The policy of government in this direction is to get the tractors from Brazil and give them to the private sector to manage them in service centers and pay back to the government within a period of 15 years. It is going to be purely private sector. Private sector in the sense that when you apply, you want to be part of this owning a service center. There are criteria to so reel out. You have to have a corporate name or a cooperative society, or even as an individual, but under a corporate name, so that you will tell us how you intend to run it. There must be a business plan that can show us you will be able to pay back over a period. Interestingly, the loan is just uh, about 15 years payment period. We have three years moratorium. So, so the payment will start after the third year, then you have 12 years to pay back, which we are sure that people that are really serious about agriculture can definitely pay back this loan within that period. Be it modern farming system, improved seed, mechanization or information on climate change, the role of extension agents to ensure success in crops or animal production cannot be overemphasized. In this regard, the Agri Ministry is partnering with the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to have more extension workers through the NAGRO. Um, the past three years under the National um, Social Investment Program, the, the, the the ministry has trained about 130,000 graduate youths as extension service providers. And this is a, a, a paradigm shift from what we had before because initially the extension agents stay at the ADPs at the state level and they move out to the, to the, to the local areas, to the farmers. But what we have under the Empower Agro is that they stay with the local communities. These extension workers are are domiciled in their local area and they are able to work with the farmers. The Agricultural Development Programs Initiative of the World Bank 
and various level of government is a good structure through which extension services can easily reach the farmers. But this structure has collapsed in some states of the Federation. Ensuring extension services requires partnership between the various governments and other relevant stakeholders to revamp the ADPs and make extension service more available to farmers. The structure that has been created through that ADP is the best tool we have as of today to disseminate our information, our capacity building to the local farmers. That is the channel we use. In ADP setup, from the state, local government, local government to world, world to sales, by the time you go to the project manager, they have the data. They can tell you in each local government, each ward, each cell, where there is extension workers. So it makes it easy for extension activity to perform their duties. The efforts of governments to reach the farmers are multifaceted in nature. However, all are driven by the policy of the ministry and agencies under it. The policy guide for research institutes to make their findings known to farmers for adoption is implemented by the Institute for Agricultural Research, Zaria, from its angle. In the course of our efforts to get feedback from farmers, we came across Shaib Urabiu, who has been a beneficiary of IAR extension services and technologies. Let us hear from him in our next segment, Farmers Speak. The coming of IAR to this community has opened our eyes to things we did not know before. We were farming anyhow, without the proper way. But IAR taught us how to farm, even how to apply fertilizer. They taught us how to do fishery and poultry, and we are seeing the benefits. Plantains resemble banana but are longer in length, have a thicker skin and contain more starch. They are also a major staple food in Africa, Latin America and Asia. They are usually cooked or fried and not eaten raw, unless they are very ripe. Plantains grow more in the humid lowlands of West and Central Africa. 100 or more different varieties of plantain grow deep in the African rainforests. Plantain is an important staple food in many developing countries, especially in Africa. It is rich in fiber and it is a common source of carbohydrate and essential vitamins. Only about 15% of the global plantain production is involved in international trade. Most production is consumed domestically. Plantain is grown in nearly 130 countries. Uganda is the largest producer of plantain in sub-Saharan Africa, followed by Rwanda, Ghana, Nigeria and Cameroon. Plantain produce fruit year-round. It can produce for up to 100 years and are suitable for intercropping. In 2007, more than 9.9 .9 million hectares of plantain were harvested worldwide. Africans annually consume 21 kilograms of banana and plantain per capita, but Ugandans consume 191 kilograms per year or more than half of one kilogram per day. Plantain farming holds a lot of benefits for Nigerians and if it is given a necessary attention, it can provide great source of livelihood and create jobs for Nigerians. Revamping the agricultural sector requires concerted efforts of all relevant stakeholders to implement government policies. It is not something that government can do on its own. Join the train of 
making an impact in transforming agriculture in Nigeria. Until I come your way again, do stay safe.